So, quick recap from the last video. We talked about bed plate adhesion and what the different types are and what we use them for. We talked about infill, the pros and cons of different densities and what different shapes do. And we finally talked about wall thickness and how that also affects the strength and print time of your print. Now we're gonna talk about tolerances. Tolerances are something that happens in every manufacturing process, be it 3D printing, be it CNC manufacturing of, I don't know, a motor. Everything is not 100% accurate to the model in the real world. It's basically impossible to get it perfect. You can get close, but never there. So what tolerances are, are what you have to mathematically put into your parts if you're making moving parts to make sure they don't mess up and that they actually do work. So if you take two gears, for example, you wanna make sure that they mesh together properly, but you have to take into account what your tolerances will be when it comes to what material you're printing. So if you remember back at that chart, when I talked about different materials, different materials behave different ways when they're printing. So PLA tends to expand, get a little bit bigger than the source model. If you have two gears that need to mesh together, if you print them at the model dimensions that mesh perfectly with each other, they're just not gonna mesh. The teeth will be too big and they won't fit through the different teeth. It just won't work. So you need to give it a little more space so that the part on the CAD looks really small, but when it prints in the real world, they're gonna mesh together nicely. ABS does the opposite. ABS tends to shrink a tiny bit when it's printing. So if you're making two gears out of ABS, you want to make it so that the gears in the program interfere. They hit each other a little bit. But when it prints, the model will shrink a tiny bit on the final product, and then the gears will mesh together. So what you want to do is you want to always account for about 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters of safety. If we were in person, I would show you the little gauges we have. But when you sign up for your workshop to get the final training, I will show you what those gauges are. So based on how close you get, uh, the looser and tighter the object will be close to each other. Because you can print two objects next to each other that are meant to interact in a way that is impossible to build, but 3D printing makes it possible. So at the different spaces, I'm sure you'll see, we have these articulating slugs that you can't actually assemble them in the real world if you use axles and pieces of wood. It just doesn't work. You would have to do it in a different way. However, it leaves a good amount of tolerance so that when it's printing, when you take the part off, it's free moving. So you could make that axle bigger inside of the tube and up to about 0.2 millimeters, it starts getting really tight. And then at 0.1, it's the same object. 0.2 moves again, 0.3, it's really free. 0.4, it's jiggling. And 0.5, it's like moving all over the place. But depending on what material, like I said, you're gonna need to account for those differently. That was the last one I wanted to talk about. It just needed its own little tail end video. Next, we're gonna talk about hardware issues quickly. Uh, hardware issues, these usually fall onto me and the other technicians. Usually you don't have to deal with these, but if you do have a 3D printer at home, you need to know what these are. So common ones are bed leveling, the extrusion head being clogged, the filament being moist, the filament broken and there's nothing in it, and then electrical and other problems with the mono prices. So, when it comes to a print that looks like a Van Gogh on the side, if you ever have anything there, you can click on this link and that will bring you to a website on Simplify 3D. And this is a great website because it shows you a picture of every issue there could be and tells you what's causing it and what you can do to fix it. So say, oh no, my object isn't sticking to the bed. Common solutions are that the bed is not level. Level it. The nozzle is too far away from the bed. Make it closer to the bed by leveling the bed or changing the Z height. First layer is printing too fast, so on, so forth. Say, oh no, the print looks like a goopy mess. It's too hot. You should turn the fans up. You should have it print at a lower temperature. It's printing too fast, things like that. And it's a really great website. It goes from really simple things to it's not starting and it's over extruding to really in-depth perfectionism ones like poor bridging or dimensional accuracy, finite things like, oh, you have vibrations and ringing. So that's a really cool website to go to. This was the last of the teaching ones. The next video we're gonna talk about Cura and we're going to throw an object into Cura and we're gonna run through how to slice it and set it up.